Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high quality website or blog. Plus, more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs with automatic device scaling. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, go to squarespace.com and use offer code FRAMERATE8. Episode 88. I'm Tom Merritt. Howdy, folks. I'm Brian Brushwood. And uh, joining us today from down in the basement, Mr. Justin Robert Young. We let him out of his cage. What's going on, George? I've made my way up. There's sunlight up there, right? Hey? <laughs> Not too much. You don't want to ruin your cornea. Uh, no, it's great to... Uh, it's so weird to be like on set with you guys for this show. This is two weeks in a row. That yeah, been in yeah. Time. Of course, uh, right after the show last time, uh, I hopped on a plane and went to Indonesia. Since then, I did this special called Mahakaria Magician 2012, which, uh, as I mentioned before, Indonesia not big on cable. What with there being thirty thousand islands and all, and everything is broadcast television. They told me like uh, over thirty million people watched live. It was no crazy. Yeah. yeah. So did you uh, did you get mobbed? I did. I mean, it was kind yeah. of, it, yeah. it was legit. I remember last time. I, I mean, it was, it was awesome. Legit. We, it got, seems, seems we, legit. we got footage of it. Like, for 48 hours, I got to feel, for reals, famous. Everywhere I went, people wanting to get my picture taken and stuff. Hey, uh, talking about seeming legit, what would you think of that trailer for Ender's Game? Uh, I mean, seems legit. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean, like, yeah, that looks great. So I guess it, it, I noticed a few effect shots from... From movies that you would seen. Yeah, yeah. Films. No, that's, that was a fake. It was a mock-up. And it was kind of fun to watch the... Folks in the chat. Room I haven't quite to... caught where all of it came from, but I definitely saw Starship Troopers. Yeah, I yeah. definitely saw Prometheus. Prometheus. Yeah, yeah. I saw uh, the implosion of Vulcan uh-huh. from the new Star Trek. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, but it's so well done. It doesn't like knock you over the head because the, the cuts are so fast. Well, apparently that guy, and that's uh, Blood Runs Clear on YouTube. Apparently he cuts together a whole bunch of uh, really badass fake movie trailers, which is an interesting hobby to have. Yeah, yeah. you're that guy. Well. <laughs> Let's start off with the big story. Boy, after that ice and snow cover. This just in, the big story. (laughs) Uh, The big story is that pay TV may have stopped growing. It all depends on how you look at it. No, Uh, listen, you're saying that's not going to that's not going to catch fire, Tom. You, the headline here is... This isn't a Hunger Games book. Pay, pay TV <laughs> is dead. It's been declared. We have we have the death certificate right now in our hands. Nah, but that's Burn true. the castle! That's <laughs> Stop the king! The math doesn't add up. Here's what's actually going on. Comcast lost 176,000 subscribers in Q2. Time Warner lost 169,000. Dish lost 10,000. DirecTV lost 52,000 for a loss of 407,000. Usually, if the big guys lose... It's made up by Uverse and Fios. They did add 275,000, uh, but that still means that, you know, over 100,000 subscribers are lost in Q2. What you got to consider is that they always lose subscribers 
in this time of year because it's the time when students graduate, people move house, uh, they disconnect, they don't reconnect necessarily right away. So it's always a downtime for subscribership. Uh, the bad news, though, is that it's the first decline ever for DirecTV. Right. And yeah. the 10th straight quarterly decline for Time Warner. Well, and, and it should, you know, and of course, Time Warner, of course, is cleaning up as far as the Internet side of things. So they're not going to, you know, close their doors anytime soon. But the, the big news is, of course, DirecTV has never re reported a quarterly loss of subscribers. But also, uh, one thing you could definitely say is that this is the beginning of a, tr of a uh, has to be the beginning of a trend where they're switching from a growth perspective, from a growth mode into a maintain Ble stop bleeding subscribers as slowly well, as possible. Well, okay, it could be or it could be the economy, which is what the cable companies keep saying. The economy's bad. Of course, subscribership is going to slow. Now, just being scientific about it, there's no way to know right now yeah. whether this slowdown is economic-related only or if it's economic-related, which is pushing people into cord cutting. You know, Are they going to stay away when the economy recovers? That's a big question. This kind of reminded me a lot of the Microsoft numbers that came out, where they, for the first time in you know a very, very long time, reported a loss. Then there was all a bunch of very, very good explanations as to why that was. Yeah, but they wrote it, down a loss like all at once. Yeah, they had a big yeah. thing. There was a reason why they were going to do it. And, and M.G. Sigler wrote that, uh, I think, a very good point that, like, listen, I'll just come out and say, you know, like, there's fundamental things that are kind of going, you know, uh, against Microsoft. That Microsoft has has frittered away, you know, a lot of kind of the momentum that they had over the past 15 years, and that kind of seems like what's happening here. They, there's all very good reasons why these numbers are this way, and I don't think that we're at the precipice of an avalanche of watching, uh, you know, these companies move from paid premium content distributors to just dumb pipe, uh, you know, movers of data. But at the same time, like, I know for me, I just moved. I got AT&T Uvers, and I really kind of regret getting cable. Getting like, TV, wow. Like, I, I, there's a lot of, you know, I, and obviously this is a, a good time for me to do that because none of my favorite shows are on. Um, and this is a bad season for sports. But even then, like, now I can buy sports by and large directly from my Apple TV. I can buy my Penguins coverage from the NHL. Well, because you don't care about the local team as much. That's the big difference. I don't care about the local team yeah. as much. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, I local think Local teams are usually blacked out for people who don't follow sports ball. Yes. Uh, but, you know, I think there's, there's a lot to be said for, you know, the options are, are greater than ever now for people who don't want to pay for cable or direct TV. I think this is going to be one of the pressure points that starts to have an effect of the cable companies offering some better internet television. They're trying, you, here's what they, this is a common pattern. They're trying to say, well, you don't need to watch Hulu and Netflix. You don't need to cut the cord. You need to subscribe to us and we'll give you TV anywhere. And then you look at it and you're like, your TV anywhere sucks. Yeah. It's not TV anywhere mm -hmm. that I can watch it and it's not the TV I want to watch. So right. the subscribers stay, stay flat. They realize, okay, we have to provide something better. I think that the next step is for somebody be it DirecTV or Dish, possibly, uh, or maybe an AT&T U-verse, to say, okay, if you subscribe to our internet plan and or partner, mm -hmm. we will give you a pass that gives you limited access to a limited number of channels streaming live over the internet, and you won't need a box. Somebody's going to be forced into trying that soon. Once they do that, if it succeeds, then you'll start to see that spread. Well, and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, this from the perspective of Aereo and their, their recent uh, decision that came down in their favor. Uh, but uh, also uh, on paidcontent.org, pay TV model won't die anytime soon from analyst uh, Barton Crockett. If you look, there's a uh, sort of a, I don't know, a graph that looks like maybe you sketched it on the back of a napkin or something. Um, that basically shows a slow going downhill. But essentially, uh, now, wh wh what do these numbers mean here, Tom? Uh, there's a lot of 20s. Right. <laughs> well, because, because the thing, the, here, here's the reason I, I was looking at I couldn't make heads or tail. What is, what is potential pay TV ROIC trend with an 8% program? Because the article talked about how he factored in that, that yes, cable companies are going to continue to charge 8% more year over year. They're going to raise the fees. But even with that in mind, cable will continue to grow through, I believe, uh, 2016. And then it'll start to uh, go downhill, which alone, even by this chart, let's say he's right and it's a very slow diminishing on it. Uh, the, uh, the, the idea that 
in what 2024 in 12 years cable tv could be completely on its way out even that i think is uh uh startling i think that's amazing for cord cutters uh can, can i say even beyond cord cutting uh i think an absolute what this is a, a harbinger of is more super public fights between carriers like direct tv comcast with the viacoms and the amcs of the world which we've seen uh with increasing frequency over the past uh you know a couple of years i think that that is only going to increase because as that pie shrinks and as each time that they accept it, each time that the channel step to the negotiating tables, they want that extra money. Uh, that's where, you know, you are going to get into competing interests. And that leads to things like what happened with DirecTV and Viacom a couple weeks ago. Right. And I'm sorry for putting you on the spot there, but asking what ROIC was. I genuinely didn't know because unfortunately I don't have a return context on for Return on investment what? capital? Uh, yes, it's return on invested capital. Okay. Uh, it's the average cost of capital, the terminal capital, and the return on the invested capital will give you the ability to calculate ROIC. For so, so this is talking value. about the money side of, 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 of the return on investment and less on a percentage of, of households that are actually paying for cable TV then? Yeah, it's not a very useful chart, I guess is what I'm saying, uh, except that it goes up for a while, right? Yes. It's In other words, oh, we've got all these sunk costs now, so we're getting return on that capital that we've already invested in. Uh, but I think I don't necessarily agree with Barton Crockett much, and I don't, I, don't, I don't see that what we're going to find is that pay TV goes away. I think if you if by pay TV, he means people paying for the television to come through the coax cable separately from the Internet, possibly right, possibly faster than he's talking about. Sure. Uh, I look at things like the Olympics, and I think they're going to catch on that this is the model that saves their ass. Yeah. Which is, Get we all will... the world's athletes. We will... If you pay... <laughs> yeah. Call the youth of the world to assemble four years hence <laughs> and pay for television. Uh, no, if we, if we get everybody to pay me, I will give them a pass to watch video. Because that's essentially what's going on in the United States. You can watch the Olympics unlimited live for free except for the opening closing ceremonies if you already pay for a service uh, it's a pass right and we, we actually have an angry email about exactly that thing and the implementation of it well, well, well but, but the point but the point is i get to watch the olympics live if i pay for comcast sure so what comcast you know whether somebody doesn't like the way nbc is doing or not is irrelevant for my point which is what they can see is hey wait a minute what if we just say Give us 50 bucks a month, yeah. and we'll give you access to all kinds of things. And if you don't want to hook up that box in your, in your living room, well, then that saves us rolling a truck and saves us that, expense, uh, yeah. that expense. So you think it and won't be— And we can then try to drive adoption of our Internet, so which does, is what Time Warner's making money off. Of. Right. So, so does this mean that we're not—not not only are we not going to get rid of— you know, a lot of people are cutting the cord for cost-saving measures— uh, but so you're saying not only will that fee not go away, but on top of that, you'll pay for the extra for the privilege of watching it somewhere besides your living room or your bedroom. Yeah, I think it says, it says like, OK, let's do the authentication model. Let's do the HBO Go model for everything. Hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, and, 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 and that that's going to be a mess because AMC is going to be authenticated on everybody but Dish because they're still having a fight, maybe. Right. Or, yeah. you know, and not every channel is going to authenticate with every pass provider. So you're going to have to look at the pass providers and say, well, which one is actually good for me? But it would open up competition because now Time Warner can suddenly go, hey, I can go into markets where Comcast exists without having to roll out any infrastructure. Yeah. And that's a, that's a huge and ability to, deal to with, make money. They deal with government regulations on where you can lay wire and everything. I saw that happen today. For the first time ever, I was on True TV's website, and uh, they, a friend of mine was on Storage Hunters, and so I wanted to watch the episode that he was on for Storage Hunters, and uh, they made me log in through the AT&T U-verse thing to prove that I already yeah. paid for True TV before I watched their precious episode of yeah, Storage Hunters. Yeah, the authentication <laughs> piece is already getting out there. It's yeah. just the ability to say, well, we don't need to come into your house, and you can pay us a little less. Because the economy is bad. We want to, we want to increase so that subscriber number. So that, right. that's where I think this is going. Let's talk about another big story. Stop everything. It's another big story. Amazon, uh, late last week, put out an app on iOS, which allows you to watch Amazon Instant Streaming Video on your iOS devices, your iPhone. Actually, I think it's just an iPad app right now, so just your iPad. 
Um, but it also allows you to watch things you've purchased from Amazon, which you couldn't do on an iPad before because the main way to watch purchased Amazon videos was either to download them, which doesn't work on an iPad, or watch them online, which was Flash, which isn't contained in uh, iPad's Safari browser. So this app is the first ability to say, okay, maybe I won't buy that thing on iTunes if I'm an iPad user. Maybe I'll buy it from Amazon and watch it in my Amazon app. Uh, so, and, and I guess, uh, I don't know if you already mentioned this, but of course, this, this capability was already built into the Fire. Uh, and uh, I, I wanted to download this and install it, but then I remembered I don't have a Capability an was built into the Fire, what? Uh, watch Amazon videos? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's, it, it's, it's one of those things to equal the, the, the two platforms out. And, and, and I, you know, I said this on Tech News Today, uh, you can watch Amazon videos on Android devices already because they have Flash. Yeah. Uh, right. Now, the Nexus 7, it, it takes a lot of doing to make the Flash work because they're no longer supporting Flash and Jelly Bean. They're not ah. including it. Uh, so I'd, I'd be very curious if Amazon didn't come out with an Android app soon. Uh, because this is what Amazon does, right? The Kindle is available on all platforms, yeah. on iOS, on Android, anywhere they can put it, even though they make hardware. Right. Because well, they say, we want to sell hardware and we want to get people addicted to buying ebooks from us. Well, and they uh, and keep in mind their implementation, especially on the Kindle's a good example, is kind of spotty because the 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 Kindle app is available on your PC, on uh, your you know all your Kindle devices, obviously, and uh, iOS and Android. But uh, strangely, and we talked about with the launch of the Scam School book, strangely, out of all the platforms that they support, the the Kindle they they tout the fact that it's multimedia enhanced with video and audio. The only platform in all of the, the Kindle verse is that that it, that any of that works on is iOS. And when we launched the Scam School book back in March, I remember you thinking, mean multimedia doesn't work on anything but iOS. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. No no embedded videos and no right. embedded audio. You know, it doesn't work in print either. <laughs> Touche, sir. But but it's but, been trying that for years. I remember thinking like, well, this is such a minor thing. Of course, they're gonna, you know, why would they have the Kindle Fire and not have the ability to play embedded audio and video? But here we are, six months later, and they still haven't done it. So it'll be interesting. Uh, it, it just because it's obvious that it, that an Android app should come out right away. I, mm, their track record with with doing the obvious smart thing is not so good in the, I don't in the th- other. I, d- I see, but I disagree with that. Putting video and embedded audio is the obvious smart thing for selling books. Well, when you, people when, want to buy books, they but, want the words. Okay, no, I mean, not many people think about like, oh, wait a minute, this doesn't have audio and embedded video. Right, so but I'm why support it on iOS and not any of, of your native devices? Why, why number one, announce that you support multimedia? Why in put your features format? in iOS and not put them in a? Right, right. Format? Why, yeah. why, why tout these features and only implement them in one app on? On, on a competing product. That is not smart. Uh, I would just say this about Prime and Amazon in general. Their biggest pain point, it's so funny to look at where people, uh, all the players in this market, where, you know, Apple is a pioneer, is obviously a conflicts with, uh, you know, the video and music providers, and they're all very wary of the idea that what's, what happened to the record companies with iTunes will happen to the movie and television studios, uh, you know, because of iTunes. So they're, they have onerous, you know, kind of deals that lead them to put DRM. Amazon, meanwhile, gets sweetheart deals because everybody wants Amazon to be a bigger player. And yet, and as a Prime, huge Prime fan, I've been a, a Prime subscriber for, I guess, four years now. I love, uh, you know, I pay that $100 or whatever it is every year without hesitation. And yet finding the library, the vast library of the free content provided to me, I would have a better chance you know, running for governor of California. Uh, I think I would, it would, sooner I would be elected than to find a single movie or video uh, on, on the Amazon Prime. But purchasing-wise, they have a very good catalog. If you want to oh, they- buy it for good... In yeah, other words, no, not how, put it on Prime, but find, buy it for good. And then you can watch it on the iOS app. Sure, yeah. But that's finding, what attracts finding me. Finding it and playing it. Like, where do I go to find those videos? You know, where do, how well, do I play it? You know, like... Amazon.com slash video, and then my iOS app. Done. Well, now the iOS app, I think it's a very good step. I think that this is, this is a step in them solving or your Kindle their... Fire, yeah. Solving their pain point. And I think it's... it's Actually, yeah, you know what? I watch a lot of Amazon videos on the Roku. Okay. And you can also watch it on Google TV as well. Okay. So, it, so in your face. Well, I don't have a Roku anymore. I gave it to my little brother. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know who else is really good at adapting to multiple platforms? The new Squarespace. Oh, my gosh. You're going to talk about the new Squarespace 6, aren't you? Well, they are a sponsor, so we probably should. Ah, oh, man. Tell me about Squarespace because I've never heard of them before. Uh, it's faster and easier than ever to create a high-quality website or blog. Oh, Brian. see, because my problem is, is I don't know any HTML at all. You don't not, need not to. So. 
You, if you learn HTML, you can get under the hood and tweak the HTML and the CSS. In fact, it's HTML5 and CSS3. But don't you don't need to know any of that. Are you you sure? just go in and, and you pick a template, and then you pick some colors, and you move some things oh, around, yeah. and you make One of those great... templates. Say, I've heard of these. The templates, they're always cheesy on all these sites, aren't they? Um, I don't know. We'll take a look at some of these templates. Did, did these look good to you? Those what? are templates. Those are real websites. Those, 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 those are great-looking, <laughs> fantastic websites. Yeah, those are the templates you can choose from right there. Uh, those are the pictures you can add, you know. They process your image into multiple sizes so that if you're right, on a look. tablet, your site looks right. If you're on a phone, your site looks right. There's not some huge image that's taken up all the whole screen. Well, and, and these aren't uh, different websites. This is the same website that just automatically reformats depending right. on where you it's You just make loading. your post, Brian. You just write your poetry as usual. You know, what, what you guys describe is too good to be you true. You write such beautiful no words, way, though, Brian. There's no way that I could try this without giving them some kind of credit card and signing up for some kind of big, fat deal. Actually, Brian, you, you just go to Squarespace.com and name your site. That's all. They don't ask for a credit card or anything to try it out. You what? try it out absolutely free. So what, you get like a, like a two-hour trial? No. No, it's much longer than that. How long? I don't know. It's two weeks. Yeah. It's a two-week thing What kind of sorcery is this? <laughs> uh, it's Squarespace 6, which I believe is the one where Squarespace is a little bit older and trains a younger Squarespace to fight. Uh, and then You know, that's a good point it. because you can keep your old Squarespace site if you're a current subscriber and still add the Squarespace 6 site so you can make sure that you get it just the way you like it before you switch over. All right, there. fine. You've convinced me. I'll make sure to move over my blog portfolio or any other site. But what promo code should I use to get a discount? Well, if you want 10% off your first purchase on new Squarespace accounts, including monthly and annual plans, and a free domain registration with the annual plan, don't forget, <sighs> use the code FRAMERATE8. That rhymes. That's FRAMERATE and then the number 8 at the end. 10% off annual plan? Yeah. Annual plan. You get 10% off the entire year and a free domain name. It's not frame rate and then the past tense of eat. Once you it's register, the number eight. <laughs> once you register a domain name, it's yours to keep. Seems legit. Yeah, seems legit. Seems to me. way legit. And we thank Squarespace for their support of Tech News Today. I mean frame rate. I did, I did <laughs> that one. You did it again. No, I did that one. You did it in that two weeks in a row. <laughs> Just uh, for I that, use code NSFW8. I know. <laughs> <We're laughs> <going to> <laughs> <laughs> I thank you for the support of all of our shows. Frame rate eight, frame rate eight, frame rate eight. Let's move into the slipstream. Seems legit. No music. It's on a very there. tiny, silent slipstream. Uh, Netflix testing out a new recommendation engine called Netflix Max. Uh, and you can only find it on some Sony PS3s. Not every PS3 user gets it. But if you get it, it starts asking you about uh, movies you like. Uh, and more than just simply rating movies, it sometimes asks you to select movies based on specific cr criteria, like starring actors. Uh, you just press the square button on your PS3 controller, and if you have it, it'll come up and start asking you questions about movies and actors and, and trying to tailor those recommendations so that when you're looking for stuff on Netflix, it surfaces better recommendations. For you. So you can confirm that Max is not like Clippy? It's not like a little animated character that pops up and is like, Hi, I'm Max. It looks like it's just a... I noticed you're watching a rom romantic comedy. I think it's just a balloon, like a, a word balloon that says Max in it. That's the only screenshot I've seen. This is cool. Well, And of course, uh, Netflix is, uh, takes very seriously their recommendation engine. Uh, so didn't I'm, they have like a big prize? Yeah, they had a one? million, million yeah, dollar million. prize. They didn't use any of that, by the way. Uh, really? They did not use any of that work. What? No. Why so, not? so they paid it out. Yeah. Yeah. Some, some, it was some... too. Com it was too complex. Wow. Well, I mean, I guess it was but, too costly to implement. But you know what's funny is even even for that, even finding that out is worth a million dollars to crowdsource out to the fact that you know what the only way to do better than what you have right now is to reduce the user experience. So that alone is worth it. YouTube is going to give more money to its channels and expand the number of channels. Wall Street Journal reporting that uh, they're going to give another $200 million to market the uh, channels they funded. The, it was a $150 million experiment. seems to be paying off. Yeah, so they're going to try a... to upgrade the, com, com, ugh, the content uh, and, and market it. And you would say double down, but you can't spend more money on a double down than you spend the first down time so this is like That's a really horrible headline isn't it yeah well no no no. i'm just i'm just saying like it's more than double down i mean this is this is huge and i guess it makes sense too if this money is going to market it oftentimes for all your big summer blockbusters the cost of the movie itself is less than half the total budget for the film because you want to promote the hell out of it so this this says they're serious this says that they believe in the people who are making the content and the quality of what they got okay so this is to create more content or to just market the to stuff market that is already... it is to market and fund the channels that they already have and uh, expand to other channels. In fact, they're going to expand into Europe. 
Wow. Uh, all right. So, so they're saying, okay, so let's say, just let's use a uh, random example, Geek and Sundry. Uh, that they he doesn't like it when you do that. Funded, a funded YouTube thing. Uh, they could go to successful uh, series there and say, hey, let's go ahead and expand that. You were budgeted for six months. Now you're budgeted for eight months or a year. Yeah, and it doesn't go by the shows on the channel. If they go to the Nerdist, they're going to go to the Nerdist and say, we gave you this this much last time. We're going to give you this much this time to keep going. Uh, okay. I don't know if they do any revenue shares or anything. I don't know anything about how that works, even though I am involved in the Geek and Sundry channel. Yeah. Uh, so that may help them not have to fund things directly, possibly. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm not sure. And then other than that, it's like now on The Walking Dead, we might see, you know, like... Uh, a Nerdist. So I had it for the Nerdist channel advertisement before Chris Hardwick goes on with, you know, talking about the Walking Dead episodes because it's a shared audience. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, and and the, the Wall Street Journal article actually goes on to talk about the difficulties in trying to get what you think would be fantastically successful uh, stuff to get viewed on YouTube. Not everything works that they've tried, but they're learning from it. And they say that overall they're, they're pretty satisfied with what they've learned. And well, so they're going to keep and, at and I'll it. tell you, that's one of the things I'm totally okay with. Uh, one of the talk, things they talk about in this article is the fact that they're so highly adaptable. It's sort of like um, uh, from an organic pers- perspective, you have a less successful organism, but it's mutating constantly, which means it's going to fill this niche faster and it's going to adapt faster. I mean, it's the Borg, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I, I will say this, though. To be honest, with how much money Google has and how much money YouTube has at their disposal and how important this is to them, I don't really know whether this is a sign of, you know, rousing success from this this one. Like, there's there's very little that I think that even with this that you can read into and say. I th- well, yeah, you, I you think what you, you could say is it's not an utter disaster that they're cutting off after the first year. Right. Well, yeah, you, you, <laughs> you could say well, that for safety. It's not an utter disaster that they've decided to cut off. Right. It you could, could be an utter disaster. Like, we got to put more money in and we got to get this out. No, I think you can, I think right. you can say by the, by the numbers that they they've actually are public uh, that you can watch on Deadline.com. And from some of the quotes in this article, they're like, no, we're seeing a return on a lot of these channels. We're seeing an uptick on a lot of these channels. Wigs is getting, you know, real, like, television rating level viewership in the women's demographic. Yeah, well, and keep in mind uh, also... And they've that, got that, advertising. That's, that's the the big thing is they've ladies. got advertiser interest. People are buying ads on this, and that's the key. It right. wouldn't matter even if they had huge numbers if nobody was buying ads. And keep in mind also that from people who live on the Internet, YouTube has seen a transformation from, you know, being the place where you go to see people get kicked in the crotch to becoming a place where high-quality content can be hosted. And I mean that both... In right next to videos of someone being kicked it, in the crotch. Absolutely. I mean, they're not losing the crotch, all right? But, yeah. but by and large, you know... When we talk about our, what our parents think or people who aren't of the Internet, uh, YouTube has a very big public image problem when it comes to trying to make people believe that, uh, that there is high-quality content on there. And the, the, by the way, uh, the latest beta of iOS 6, which is coming out this fall, doesn't have a YouTube app in it. Uh, really? So that's going like, to be interesting. Like preloaded? Yeah. Okay. Or, so yeah. Right, so iOS. To... In other words, iOS comes with certain apps, right? Yes. It comes with a Maps app, which is going to be new. It's not going to be a Google Maps app. Yeah. It comes so you... with a camera app. It's not going to come with YouTube app anymore. Is, is that so, just so more you... of the fallout with the with the pout match between Google no, and... Well, it's, uh, Apple and Google didn't uh, re-up their, their license, so... We should have known when they announced that they were going to have a new Maps app that this was going to happen because it was all part of that same license. Yeah. So we'll see a new YouTube app from Google, which that, that YouTube app in iOS has not really been touched much since launch. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, and I use the hell out of it, so that really surprises me that I'll have to go I mean, it'll still be, I mean, we'll just download it. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah. Manhattan video aggregating app uh, added HBO, NBC, The CW, and Cinemax now. Uh, it now gives you a total of 175,000 movies and TV shows across 14 different I- iPad apps. So if you watch a lot of video on your iPad, this is a great way to find out where you can get the videos. You just type in a search and say, I want to know if this is on, and it will tell you whether it's on HBO or ABC or Netflix or Hulu. Now, you've uh, used Fanhattan before, right? I, I've toy- I, I, I don't use it very regularly. Okay, no, I mean, I've tried it. Yeah, if that, that's what you've you used it to know, like, like there's, uh, do you log the television that you're watching? In no, order I don't to tell use it? that. I use SideReel. Okay. Right. Uh, the problem with Fanhattan for me is it's just, I- it's just iPad. It's just iPad apps. So if that's all you care about, it's actually really good for that because they, they do a queue where you can say, hey, let me know when this movie is available on any of these apps. I would like that, but I want it for all of the internet, not just iOS apps. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Too expensive, too clean, too gentrified. 
I liked it better when it was dirtier in the 70s. Yeah, I, I liked it before they sold out. Seems legit. I'm not sure what to make of this next thing. Dial, D-Y-L-E. It is a brand name for an ATSC wireless broadcast that lets you broadcast video over the air. Over the air. It's just normal, like you would get on your television, but to mobile providers. It, it, it is. Uh, it is also the name, the <laughs> last name of a main character of the Diamond You Club couldn't book. even get a point on I'm Target sorry. with the story. I'm sorry. Uh, yes. And uh, so, so and when you say you don't know what to make of it, what do you mean? You mean you don't know if there's do a point I to it? Do I want over-the-air broadcasts on a separate spectrum from regular digital broadcasts for my telephone? For my smartphone, do I need to, and I have to buy a new smartphone that has the antenna that allows me to get this dial service. No. But it's provided, it's provided by the broadcasters, so it's free and clear. There's no DVR functionality in it yet, uh, it's, and you need to have an app to make it work. It's just live. I, I mean, I guess for the blacked out sports that you do care about that you can't get any other way, this would be nice, but I don't see myself going and jumping on board with a, a new smartphone just to get dial. And there's not that, I mean, there's one Samsung phone that has it. There's going to be a handful of them out, but the best phones are not going to have it. Yeah, it yeah. seems like this is a very fantastic solution that took two years for a problem that we're all about to leapfrog in the next two years anyway. Uh, it, and, and we talked about this on TNT. One of the suspicions of why television broadcasters are using this is so that they don't lose their spectrum. Uh, yeah, they, the the FCC is really putting the pressure on television stations to to show that they deserve to continue to have all of the spectrum that they do, uh, and and this is one way to say, look, we're used, we're putting spectrum to great use. We've got this dial service that goes right to smartphones, and yeah, it is a better experience on a smartphone to receive television on the dial service because it is meant for the phone. Right. So digital TV gets gets really hard to receive even with a ground based antenna. It's much harder with a phone. This is meant for that. I just don't know how much demand there is for it. I mean, it just seems like at this point, if you have an idea to go to these companies who are trying to protect their spectrum and you just want to put something on there, like, now's the time to pitch. Yeah. Like, I want just all, all right, it's an app, and it's just a constant stream of Spanish Civil War era clown paint. Great. <laughs> can, uh, can you have it up by Tuesday? Done. Yeah. It's already done. Look, FCC, we're making we great lost. use of the spectrum. Uh, on the other side of local TV broadcasting is Aereo, which lets you get your local channels on the web, anywhere on the mm -hmm. internet, actually, uh, through their service. Now, they won in court. We talked about this on frame rate. Uh, a, a, a reprieve from an injunction, so they're allowed to continue operating. And now they've got some nice services. Yeah, so, okay, try this on for size, Justin. Tell me, tell me which of these, if anything, you would go. And you know what Aereo is, right? You rent yeah. an individual antenna somewhere very far away that streams... Uh, content directly to your smartphone no matter where you are, and it's uh, you know region-locked based on your area. Right now, it's only in New York, but let's say Justin. Sure, let's say yeah. it's available. And, of course, the it's question is... It's only available in Fanhattan. Right, exactly. And and sometimes the the Franks. <laughs> the important thing Greens. is that people were wondering, okay, so now they've they've won their, their day in court for now, so they we know that their service is legal, but the question is, is it profitable? Is it something anyone's going to want to pay for? So they've decided to to bring people in without giving a credit card of any kind. you got uh, three different options. Uh, you can uh, use an hour per day completely free on your phone, wherever you are, watching whatever channel you want. That's the only option that doesn't require a credit card. Yes, correct, obviously, because uh, otherwise you'd have to, like, mail stuff by carrier pigeon. Uh, you could do a day pass, which is $1, gets you 24 hours, all the channels to watch whatever you want. Fighter of the night pass. <laughs> and uh, you could do mon uh, monthly, based, uh, based uh, $8 a month if you prepay for a certain amount, or uh, $12 a month. Uh, would you do any of these? I assume you would do the free one. And, and what would you use it for? Yeah, it, it, is this the Barry Diller company? Yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, I think Barry Diller is one of the most brilliant television entrepreneurs that we've seen in the last, you know, 30, 40 years. So I think there's a good idea here. I I don't know. I mean, like, right now, I I mean, I guess I'd probably use it. I mean, I, I'd probably, you know, go for more of a month-to-month -month thing on, you know, when there are uh, shows I like. But then again, like, this is Broadcast Network. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know if there's any broadcast television that I'm super, you know, that and I this follow. And this does have a DVR. So you're, you're, you're talking about your ABC, NBC, CBS shows, uh, anything in prime time, all the Olympic coverage is available on this. Right. Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's like when, when Lost 
you know, went away. It kind of sort of knocked out everything that I kind of wanted to watch on, on network television. That's amazing to me because, like, uh, I, I, will, I will say unless, right unless now. somebody in the chat room down starts, Abbey. starts screaming. Yeah, but I, I got that. that Sherlock? That all of those, all those shows I've bought on iTunes or waited for on Netflix. Like, I've, I've had no PBS. But you wouldn't have to. But, but I'll tell you what. I wouldn't have to. But that's how I've, I've loved those shows. And that's how I've experienced that. See, no, I, I would I would use the hell out of the one dollar pass, even the, uh, all the way to the tune of using it like fifteen times a month and overpaying for the use of it, uh, just because I love knowing that now I can cut the cord and I don't have to like to me. And this is this is how lazy and stupid I am. A significant obstacle to cutting the cord is the fact that I would have to buy an aerial antenna and set it up at my house. But if I could do that and in my own living room, that's the dream, bro. <laughs> but if I could cut the cord and use aerial or, or aerial and just know that it's there for me for those you know those nights where you know everyone's watching the Oscars and you don't want to miss it, or you know somebody wants to watch a six-hour delayed heavily edited version of the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, uh, that I could be there for only a buck. All right, let's move on to Tube Tops. Tube Tops. Can we make a new version of the intro with the little song that you just sang? That's already being made. Hulu Plus has come to Apple TV. Excited? I mean... Do we care? It just showed up. There was no big announcement. This is Mr. Overnight, Apple TV right Apple here. Apple TV got Hulu Plus. Uh, yeah, I love Apple TV. Apple TV is my boyfriend. And um, I'm not a Hulu Plus guy. Uh, but if I was a Hulu Plus guy, I would be thrilled by this. Yeah, well, we got an email about Hulu Plus, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we so we'll, we'll save that discussion. I, I have a just problem so with Hulu Plus. I have a problem with paying for ads. Yeah. I have a problem with paying for uh, things. Well, he spoiled the email. Well, no, <laughs> actually, he didn't spoil the email until you pointed out that that's what it was in the email. And now I've spoiled the email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also Into Now, uh, the app from Yahoo, that is, is a second screen thing. So it's not necessarily a tube top. It's more of a tube side-by-side uh, but it, they, they added this weird feature called the real-time meme generator. At least that's what uh, Wired.com is calling it. It allows you to grab screens within a few seconds of what you're watching. And it uses that's the amazing. audio recognition to do it. So it's not grabbing it from your television directly. It listens and it says, oh, you're, at this you're part watching on this, show. this show right now. I'm going to grab screens from a couple seconds before, a couple seconds after where I think you are and put them up there so that you can find exactly the screen you were trying to grab and then you can put, you know, your your I can has comments on it. The, That's great. It's a it's great. I don't know how useful it is, but the real bummer is that it only is for currently live broadcasting material. So if you're watching a DVR the next morning, you're uh, out of luck. Oh yeah, that's which kind is, of which a, is a bummer. I tried it over the weekend though, and I had to say it was really laggy. Oh, like, really? It wasn't good at knowing exactly where I was. I was trying to do a screen cap of the Olympics, and I was getting commercials that had been on, like, 20 seconds before. Oh. It was a little behind. That, I mean, listen, there's, there's a problem with cool tech like that, where it's just like, you know, like, they get it out, and on the feature list, it's like, that is awesome. Right. I would love to write silly things over Lolo Jones's face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Who then, wouldn't? Who wouldn't? Uh, and then, like, if, if the tech isn't there, it just kind of spoils that experience. You try it three times, and and by the time that you're trying to, you know, write a profanity above Usain Bolt, you're just like, this doesn't work. I'm never using it again. All right, let's blaze through the film film. So, uh, Bill Nye fans, either one of you guys? Sure. Yeah? Yep. I also like America and the Beatles. Well, Bill Nye coming to YouTube on the Nerdist channel. Uh, he's going to have a show, and there's a trailer up right now if you want to watch uh, a little teaser about what it's going to be. Uh, they haven't said anything about the format that I've seen yet, but he's wearing the bow tie. Yeah, he's been full character. Uh, this would be great, man. If, if they're good episodes, I'd love to introduce. My, my, my daughter loves science, and it would be awesome uh, if, you know, if... Her generation's Bill Nye was Bill Nye. Yeah. Wouldn't that be appropriate? Right? Crazy. <laughs> uh, also, H+, uh, which we, we interviewed uh, uh, one of the uh, the writers and creators uh, a couple weeks ago on Frame Rate, is coming out August 8th. So Super excited about Two days about from today it. when we're recording this episode. Yeah, big old fat chunk of those Minnesotas. Another one of those, uh, those big uh, YouTube shows that's out there. Which one was that? H, uh, H plus, it's plus. one where everybody uh, gets enhancement to have this fully immersive, re- real time web I- interaction. But then, like I don't know, eight billion people die at once, and so there's a question of, you know, 
do you stay natural or do you dive in? Huh. Go listen to our interview with John Cabrera. It's way good. It's, it was, it was uh, July 23rd. Seems legit. Seems legit to me, too. <laughs> Seems legit. I'm not going to quit. BBC showing off 33 megapixel super high vision Olympic footage. Uh, it's a demo in London. You have to be invited. Uh, and it's, it's a limited number of events because they don't have that many cameras. But Sharif Sark from Engadget went and saw the demo. We talked to him on Tech News today, and he was over the moon about it. He said the pixel is dead. Like, you just can't yeah. see. He's like, yeah, sure. Thing. HD looked great when we first saw it, but then we start going, oh, I noticed a pixel here and there. 4K, same thing. Looks amazing, blows you away. Then once you've watched it for a while, you start to go, well, here's a pixel here and there. He's like, 8K, you cannot see pixels. I got as close to this. It was a big screen, too. It wasn't like they put it on a tiny screen. It's like, I could not see a pixel anywhere. He even zoomed in with his camera to try to catch it. Uh, the, even even the, the the little YouTube video that you put up, it looks amazing. Well, this is this is the point where you stop calling them televisions and you start calling them video walls or something else. It's like I think this is great. I think that it's bad to try to market 4K displays to people at home for the purposes of watching it as a television. Uh, I think if you jump ahead to something like this, you find a brand new use for which it's a uh, television would be wholly ina- inadequate. BBC, uh, a, a BBC official said that he thinks people should just jump right from HD to 8K. The broadcasters, he means. Yes. Uh, let's let's not mess around with 4K. Just I agree. I agree because uh, 4K is going to be a bust. The thing is, this is going to this isn't ready. The, the costs have to come down. The production, uh, you know, of the equipment has to get cheaper before it can be massively uh, available. And folks are going to get impatient and buy 4K cameras because they can't because they're cheaper. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, it's, it's in, in a perfect world, maybe, you know, they make this jump. But I do really like the idea of, of you know, people, you know, some, some shifty BBC uh, intern being like, hey, you want to come see an 8K screen, all right? <laughs> Don't tell nobody. <laughs> Don't tell your trouble and strife. <laughs> come down. Well, come on now. You ain't going to wait forever. Ah, <laughs> uh, because they're all cockney. <laughs> Uh, you got some good answer. news for Doctor Who fans. Yeah, actually, this came to me from uh, Bill Meeks. By the way, Bill Meeks joined me on our adventure all the way out to Indonesia. Did a fantastic job shooting that stuff for Scam School. Shame but... what happened to him out there. <laughs> R.I.P. Uh, well. uh, Bill Meeks. <laughs> we'll but always remember him. This is a science story uh, about BBC television signals that are being bounced back to Earth. Uh, the Basically... The, uh, Being bounced back to Earth off what? Th- well, that's the question, right? They, they, they say they, they don't know for sure because it's too dark and too far, but they assume that there's a collection of asteroids. I assume for it to be a uh, 47-year-old television signal. It Where did be- they find it? I mean, I can't just pick this up on my, uh, on my antenna, though. Uh, no. They, I mean, the, the photo here is of the Arecibo Observatory, which I don't know. It, it says that that's what is finding the television shows lost in space, but significantly... Because we can now get this is like a, this is like a time warp. We can see what we were broadcasting 47 years ago, and we can capture those signals. Which means, as we've talked about pitching our show Who Hunters for the lost episodes of Doctor Who, now they're able to find these old episodes of Doctor Who and capture them. Which is this is utterly remarkable to me that they're doing this. Yeah, it was Doctor Venn, uh, a radio astronomer at the Arecibo Observatory, uh, that described that he was analyzing a number of signals originating from uh-oh, the same point uh-oh, in space. Oh, 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 hold on! Alert! 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 Yeah. Yep, April. They're saying old and fake. April two thousand nine. Bill Meeks was 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 caught and oh, still oh, bubbling this is, around. This, this is fake. Yeah. You put this in the in the lineup and it's fake. I did because I trusted Bill Meeks. <sighs> Meeks just punked you. I did. With shame he had old. to die. <laughs> it's, shame, it's shame that he's still going to have to have. Been I like that. Now this one uh, may. You know what? Let's go and report this as being a lie, and then maybe it'll turn out to be true. Warner Brothers has the Dark Tower decision to make and Russell Crowe in the mix. What do you think of Russell Crowe oh, as Roland to shame? I guess he'd be fine. I just don't believe any of this stuff anymore. We've been jag- jagged around since we launched the show two years ago oh God, of the Dark right. Tower coming out. It was going to be Benicia Del Toro, Ron Howard directing. It was going to be on TV and in movies. And then they pulled the plug and then they said, no, they're reviving it. So I'm burned, Brian. I'm burned. Not just by this, but by that last story we just almost I did. I can't believe I got burned by that. Bill Meeks. The one, the one me. thing that has the Dark Tower has going for it is that, you know, the idea of as movies become less and less of a sure thing, they want big franchises that you can have two or three movies out of. You know, move, franchises that are two movies, they need to get three movies out of. So, you know. Uh, Actually, I think Russell Crowe. Now I'm, I'm you know, sink, oh, I can totally see it. In. I can totally he's see it. Well, it and, off. and the other thing is, number one, he's he's box office gold, right? If anyone's and he does not. 
do bad movies. Uh, like I can't think of a really bad Russell Crowe movie, or I certainly can't picture him being bad. Gladiator may be the worst movie he's done, which is saying which, something. Yeah, yeah, which, yeah. I mean, which is good. And, and plus, it was a big blockbuster. So if and if it your movie, best picture, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? If if you well, not best are, picture, did it? Yeah, 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 really. It won really good picture. <laughs> I thought it was just okay picture. It, it, it won seems legit picture of the year. <laughs> but here's what I was going to say, is if your studio wants to take a chance, which, and let's face it, Dark Tower is a weird property to, to bust out uh, tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars on, uh, I, I would be much more likely to back that kind of cash with Russell Crowe attached. I'm not sure if it seems legit. Well, let's talk about deadlines, weekly rankings for YouTube channels. Uh, I think you could guess that... If you knew Team USA had a funded channel from YouTube and would be ranked on this list, that it would skyrocket. It actually only got up to number 26, but it did jump 27 slots, gaining 266% viewers uh, over the previous week. So it's it's doing quite well. People are looking on YouTube for all kinds of, of, of Olympics video, and, and that seems a likely place to find it. Uh, number one, still the Warner Sound. Uh, people still looking for music videos. And I, I think that's going to be a bellwether day when we see music videos no longer at the top of this chart. Yeah, now do you think it's a case where the amount of searching for music videos will plateau and stay the same, and it'll be up to the original content to surpass it in interest? Or if it's a case yeah, where, where kinda, that's going to yeah. grow as well with everything? No, I think I think the, the amount with the music videos probably does say the stay the same because i'll tell you what i think oh i want to listen to this song one of the first places i go is youtube yeah oh yeah you know and that and that's what's driving this number that's not going to go away i don't think i think but what could happen is that what people don't say is hey i want to watch a funny and engaging entertainment television program they don't go to youtube yet right uh, yeah. and that's why youtube's trying to change yeah let us talk about the movie draft uh, also, let me just point out that I ran that story on Weird Things today. Wait, well, you did today? Yeah, the fake one. Oh! The, oh, the Doctor so, one. so whereas we were able to recall it instantly, you have to wait until after the show to run and go delete the post off of Weird Things. Thank yeah. you, chat room. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, the the uh, the winner is Justin Robert Young. Let's just, I mean, hey, let's just there he is. Total Recall. Mr. Asterisk nine, Man. The $900 million man, is that what you're talking to? Total Recall, uh, $25 million over the weekend. A huge disappointment for me. Yeah. Uh, and the studio <laughs> that sunk money into it. Uh, there's no way I can catch you now. Uh, I've only got one other movie, Paranorman. Even, and it's just, it's not going to do the $140 million on its own that it would have to do and let's, to catch you. I mean, let's give Justin his due. Not only did he win, but he won with the largest uh, haul for any of the core players. I mean, I, I think we've seen Chat Realm put, piece together stuff over a billion before. But, I mean, Justin's almost kissing a billion with his picks. And now, Sarah, Sarah Lane has uh, The Campaign, which is out this coming week, along with The Bourne Legacy, which is Veronica Belmont's movie. Uh, Sarah also has one more movie later on, The Expendables 2. She has $392 million, and Dark Knight's going to continue to make money for the next few weeks. I mean, I can see her overtaking Brian and, and Scott, but uh, I think in terms of, of the, the winner of this, we, with all due humility, I think it's, uh, <laughs> I think it's over. Uh, I love how this guy on camera is very different from the Justin Robert Young off camera. <laughs> or Twitter. <laughs> Oh, Where he was posting what? end zone dance pictures. <laughs> I, listen, I'm a big fan of primetime Deion Sanders and his end zone celebrations. <laughs> okay, I don't want to give you an asterisk anymore, though. I no, did, I, I, I think you did. Did you guys last, was, was yesterday a big let's hold hands, or last week a big oh, let's hold hands and complain about Justin getting Ted? Well, it wasn't hold hands, on. it was, it was no, put it was hands cross, together. You got to cross this, it to yeah. make an asterisk. Oh, okay. We're going to okay. call you the A. Here's the thing. Even if you take out Ted, which the reason we would give Justin an asterisk is because he was granted Ted Joe, as a replacement Joe for G.I. Joe. Even right. if you take out Ted, you still probably beat me. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, and, and when or, you say, or, or replace it with... With a low-grossing G.I. Joe. Yeah. yeah. Right. But I mean, but the fact that you could beat him even, even without Ted, like just, you know, like uh, G.I. Joe went away and you got nothing. You yeah. lose, sir. Uh, then you still win. Yeah. You don't lose, sir. No, yeah, I win. Uh, not, uh, because, not and, and the reason is because of Brave, The Amazing Spider-Man, and Ice Age. Uh, you, you, you played on one of my cardinal rules, and I didn't even notice it during the draft, which is go after the kids' movies because everybody ignores them. Right. Uh, I wasn't able to get Ice Age or Brave, and I wanted it, so I got Paranorman, but it's not going to be near the level well, of And here's movie. the other nice thing for Justin is that uh, those were not lucky picks. Everything, he had a strategy, he did the research, he knew, he knew in advance the yeah. least amount of money that any Pixar movie had ever made. Uh, oh no! Yeah. I, this, this I took this this draft more seriously than I've taken 
any fantasy draft ever uh, in any form. <laughs> I was sick of losing. And okay, well, and specifically coming in last place. <laughs> I had come in last place several times. Uh, you know, I think I've, I've, I have mentioned many times that, uh, you know, since... Me and Brian invented this uh, this this concept. I was sick of getting my butt kicked in it, and uh, the idea was to try and uh, I thought there were going to be four can't miss films: Sparkle, uh, Sparkle, the Campaign, <laughs> Paranorman, and uh, Tom's Home Movies, <laughs> uh, which would be theatrically released in a great surprise to everybody in a week and a half. Uh, no, but uh, it was. Hunger Games, Avengers, Batman, and Spider Man. I thought those were going to be well, and even then, you you barely put Spider Man on that list. It yeah, was kind of it was, a wild card. Yeah, that it's like it could overperform, uh, you know, and and do what like Spider Man three did, or it could do slightly less. But that I wanted to go ahead with with a bunch of solid base hits because I like knowing that there were three other absolute killers, that there were going to be three players that were basically going to take themselves out of the game in terms of being able to get mid size hits. By rightfully spending, like, I mean, if you look at what you spent for Avengers, it's almost that. I mean, now that we've found, like, and this has been a, a cardinal rule now, that you want to get basically $10 million per dollar you spend. Yeah. And you nearly got $10 million per like, dollar you spent for the highest movie. It was worth the money, movie. yeah. Yeah, it was, it was worth it. And really, if you look at the reason why you didn't, the difference between me and you in terms of this. I didn't get any other crap. Is, yeah, like, you didn't, you, you, you went with. Uh, the Raven. Yeah, you were the, what that you was that was probably the, the Raven. Yeah, the total Raven. recall and paranormal. Yeah. Like if you would have gotten four. All right, save it for your money. acceptance speech. Okay, I'm, you haven't yeah, won yet. Yeah, right, the yeah. thing isn't over. Or or the Amazing Spider-Man or Ice Age. I think yeah, you yeah. would have. This would have been your victory. Let's uh, move on to what we're watching. He wins. <laughs> what we're watching. Now, Brian, you explained at the top of the show you're in Indonesia all week, but did you see any Indonesian television in, in the I, hotel or anything? Uh, was there anything I, interesting? I made Indonesian television. You were on Indonesian, I was on Indonesian television. television. What, was, what were you on again? Uh, Mahakaria Magician 2012. Kazintai. Yeah, <laughs> you've been sitting on that one for a while. Big time. Uh, but the, Since uh, the 50s, apparently. On the flight? <laughs> <laughs> it's the fresh comedy stylings of Justin <laughs> Robert Young. You know, it's a, we like to bring the younger demo here to Twin. <laughs> So uh, I did rewatch the Avengers on the plane, and I was it, rewatching it a second time. I'm I'm still really bent out of shape trying to pick which one's better between the Dark Knight and the Avengers. And you could say, oh, they're just very different movies, but but factually, one of them has to be better than the other. And and I'm not saying I'm not saying you know to everyone else, but in my heart, I have to like one more than than the other. And it was interesting after watching the Dark Knight how how much of kind of a silly comic book pill you do have to swallow at the beginning of the Avengers, but once you do, the ride is exceptional. Now, keep Take in mind also... Take the blue pill. Exactly, yeah, right, yeah exactly. you dive into the rabbit hole. Now, keep in mind watching it, you know, on a four-inch LCD display on the back of a plane is a different situation, but meanwhile, uh, the writing is so good, and it delivered... I laughed out loud like five, six times uh, during that movie. It is, I in my heart, and, you know, I gotta go back and watch The Dark Knight again, but I, I think I gotta give it to The Avengers. So, so good. Now, I watched Breaking Bad, which we're not gonna talk about right now. Uh, I watched the, a lot of the Olympics uh, this week, uh, both, both on... Uh, online, but also just I don't mind the tape delay when they're honest about it because I don't have time to watch everything during the day. So sure. like, give me a recap. I think that's great. Give me a chance to to watch some stuff with some context and show me some highlights because I don't have time to plow through everything. Uh, but I, the thing I, I watched this week uh, above and beyond everything else uh, that I, I loved was the Curiosity Landing on Mars oh, yeah. last night. Well, and, and your coverage specifically last night. Yes, that, my, uh, you're... watching my own coverage specifically well, no, last I night. No, I am the I one love. trying to tell you how good your coverage is. That's what I'm saying. Not only was it a riveting <laughs> event, but right here on Twit, you guys did a fantastic job covering the special. You gave a it context It was not meant as a self-plug, well, though. No, it was but... meant to celebrate the fact that humans put a robot on Mars yesterday night in one of the most complex situations ever. Yes, absolutely. But if you do want to want it, with all Tom's humility now unpacked... uh, What I did was better than NASA. (laughs) Way better. And if you want to understand... No, seriously. If you do understand, Tom did a very uh, great interview with uh, the man who put together the... uh, Oh, Steve Sell, yeah. It was was really fun talking to him. The guy who did the Sky Crane. Sky Crane, Yeah. yeah. I, for some reason, I literally came very close to saying Skyhook. <laughs> yeah, I talk, think NASA you, came you, very close to naming it that. You talked to Kareem like, Abdul-Jabbar. They, they sent their interns interview. looking for it. <laughs> Find the Skyhook. Uh, can, I, can I say I finally got around to watching uh, 21 Jump Street? 
The movie? The movie? Yeah. No. Did you, you see that? Say that. <laughs> you Why? Can't say that. I was it. Was that any good? Uh, uh, awesome. Like really, 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 really good. Yeah. Uh, like Channing Tatum is just like kind of in a very weird way, just sort of bubbled up as like a very competent, hilarious comedic actor. Joan Hill's very, very funny. If you liked the MTV series Clone High, which mm-hmm. I was a huge fan of, uh, it was two of the the creative minds behind that that are the directors. Uh, I think they're actually directing the new Captain America movie, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. Uh, it's it's a big uh, departure for them, but uh, they're extremely creative. The movie's fantastic. and uh, huh. All right. Yeah. That's not what I expected you to say. No, it was great. Uh, no, I, I did. I heard uh, a lot of good things about, uh, about that. Movie. Ice Cube kills it. All right, real quickly, some feedback. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Flame Radio. Yeah. Under Trophy writes to me, says you and Tom are both right. Yes, Brian. I like it when that's the case. This is amazing. How could this happen? Uh, he's talking about, of course, uh, the foleying of sound effects in the Olympics. He said the podcast was NPR's On the Media, and they talked about mics and foley. The archery coverage was mic'd with normal mics well-placed. Mm-hmm. Gymnastics used contact mics for a hyper-real sound of equipment groaning that might not normally even be perceptible. And the rowing and horse races described were all fully, which is what Brian was saying. Yeah, uh-huh, see? So they do. They do a little bit of both. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe they fully in splashes for the rowing. Well, sure. That's a- well, I mean, they want to they convey... Just do a shotgun mic. Can't you hear it? Well, you could also... It must not be good you enough. You could also hear the guy going, Row! Row! I, yes, that's what's really happening. I want to hear that. Uh, I what if he's saying naughty words, Tom? That's right. Then what? <laughs> what if row is a naughty word in your language? <laughs> row! What if he's an old pirate? <laughs> row, you bastards! <laughs> All right, Jake writes us. Want to say that 8K <laughs> Jake <laughs> writes us saying, Brian and Tom. You're on an 8K screen. I've been using Hulu Plus to watch Community lately and hate having to watch commercials. Would you pay for no commercials for the same content? How much would you pay? I want all of the shows that they have, and I hate paying for it on a service that is premium that still has commercials. Let me tell you, uh, I've come around on Hulu Plus. I hated it when they announced it because it's like if I'm paying one cent, I don't want to see any commercials. But then I realized that what Hulu Plus is delivering is a bridge to to get the content producers, the broadcast networks, to allow this material to be shown on your, your living room television set or on your iPad and so on. Wow, it's so nice of them to allow me to take something that I could put there anyway without their assistance. I'm saying that in my mind, it is not an expense that I like, but I understand it you know and, what? It's, and it's there Exactly. Now. What bothers me is not the fact that they're charging you for something with commercials in it. If it was, in fact, a premium offering on top yes. of what I could get without paying... Uh, in other words, extra episodes or uh, earlier access to episodes or, or, or a well, live well, catalog, no, but, but, but higher episodes. definition but their, video. Their, answer, that would, is, their but, answer is, like, right now, but, you can't watch any of that stuff yes, on your I can. without buying Yes, it. I can. I absolutely can. How? I can take Hulu, put it up on a television, and VPN into it. It is technically impossible for me to not be able to watch that if I put my mind to it. What they're saying is, we make it easy by providing the apps, and the normal people don't realize that there's not a difference. It's a freaking computer. They're creating a problem that doesn't exist in order to try to fool me into paying. It's why I have my Hulu Plus subscription on permanent suspension. It's crap. Okay. Give me something that's actually more valuable. What well, you're complaining now, about... Now, if you just go to the Hulu website, if, if for Mac owners, if you have an Apple TV, you can, with the new operating system, Mountain Lion, you can just mirror your screen. Exactly. I can airplay anything on Hulu to my television. We're, and and certainly that will reduce the, the value of Hulu Plus over time. But essentially what you're complaining about is artificial scarcity. But the internet is run on artificial scarcity. Warcraft works because of impro- because of the artificial scarcity of the But loop. that's a real scarcity. No, it's artificial. It's a real Someone artificial scarcity. Someone can clickety clack and make all of the things No, but there. it's different. There is an essential difference, which is with Warcraft, they run the servers, they make the content, and I can't not use those servers, right? They've locked me out. Sure. With Hulu, uh, I, they're basically saying, oh, we, we're actually, you could do this, but we're going to pretend like you can't and charge you for it. Well, no, it's, it's, it is exactly the same kind of artificial No, I mean, I can do DRM. it. It's not, arti- it's not, yeah, DRM is very close. I get what you're saying, right? Because War- Warcraft puts DRM and says you can't run outside servers right. and use it outside. But even if you could, you wouldn't be in their universe. Right, well. This would be like if Warcraft said, you can play World of Warcraft 
except on that smaller laptop. Now you have to pay us five dollars extra, which they're which they have every right to do. I well, think. they have it's the their right property. to do, but it's ridiculous, and I have the right not to pay them and say that stupid. Agreed. Don't fall for the crap. Agreed. I agree with you a hundred percent across the board, and I'm not saying that I like it, but I'm saying they have the right to do it now. But well, they have the right to do anything stupid. Okay. That's not much of a point. <laughs> they have the right to do this. <laughs> burr, burr, burr. I'm Look at me. <laughs> I'm looking forward to our new show, Grousing with Tom. <laughs> I like that when Tom gets so angry, he sounds like a revolutionary. Allegedly, what Hulu's trying to tell me. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Steve, who's mad at NBC because uh, he has his brother couldn't get Olympics coverage, even though his brother subscribes to DirecTV. The reason was his brother subscribes to the basic package of DirecTV. And NBC, a lot of people don't realize there's a little loophole here, only will authorize you if you subscribe to a package that has MSNBC on it. Ah, So the basic package of DirecTV doesn't have MSNBC. Therefore, he's not paying enough. It seems like that is a really lousy thing for NBC to do, to spend so much time beating their own chest and trumpeting the fact that they're going to grant you this a- aspect, that it's NBC coverage and NBC Well, they have the right to do it, Brian. They do. They do. But the- <laughs> Don't make <laughs> do the thing I do. The thing you yeah, got. go ahead. <laughs> NBC, yeah, you have to buy NBC. No, 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 okay, go ahead, finish your point, I'm sorry. It's like if, if the rule is you have to get NBC, then brand it as MSNBC and say this is the channel that, that's bringing it to you. But well, don't don't go around touting that it's an yeah. NBC thing and, and if you got NBC on cable. I agree with you, and it's, it, what it is is them saying, well, there's hardly anybody who doesn't pay for a package and get MB- MSNBC. Right. So we're not going to have too many people run into this. It won't turn into a PR nightmare for us because those people don't matter. Right. And that's what I think is crap. But, but at the same time, uh, there have to be enough people that when... I mean, this is, this is a decision made by somebody making a number saying projected possible loss, you right. know, by people streaming this and getting this, and then uh, uh, this set. is like this is like the the recall math from uh, Fight Club, where it's like the the average out of court settlement yeah. times the percentage of absolutely, times, yeah. and and what they know is coming in from cable subscriptions from uh, you know uh, cable companies that buy uh, subscriptions to MSNBC, soon to be whatever they're going right. to rename it, NBC News, uh, and the the channel NBC, and yeah. so they but, don't get as much. For the channel NBC, because in many markets, it's must carry and they haven't challenged. Uh, yeah. So they get more for MSNBC. So that's where they're, you know, they're saying, look, we, we, need, we need all that money coming in and then we'll let you watch. Which, frankly, they're selling ads on the Olympics coverage mm-hmm. anyway. I mean, this is like they spend it's a broadcast. gigantic amount of money on the rights to the Olympics. And that's why all the dumb things that they're doing can all be justified. If you go to the theory of mind of NBC is we need to make... All the money that we that we spent on this back now. But this what, is not. What about the BBC, which I know is a different business model to begin with because mm-hmm. it's state funded. Right. Yeah. However, the BBC is offering 24 channels in your home by pressing a red button that gives you every sport live as it happens. And what they're finding is every one of those channels has peaked out at 100,000 viewers at some point. Every one of those channels is being used. Uh, and, and they're getting exposure across everything that they put on. BBC One through BBC Four, the regular channels and these special channels and online. Nothing is undercutting anything else by being overexposed. NBC would be making more money back Hold on. if they weren't blocking The people. BBC is smarter than NBC. <laughs> I, I was well, say, they have the right to do that. And say better, yes. <laughs> exactly. No. They have the right to do it. Yeah, do, do, do it with the accent. Hi, I'm, I'm BBC. There you go. I like to do smart things. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants to see my 8K screen? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that's it for this show. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening. If you would like to send us an email, our email address is framerate at twit.tv. Of course, you can find us on the web on demand, twit.tv slash fr. Tell your friends. And join us live. Uh, you can be in the chat room and help us realize that we've covered something that's fake. I mean, or yeah, thank give us you all kinds of feedback. Uh, just find us on the web at twit.tv, or, or sorry, live.twit.tv every Monday, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. See you next time. <laughs> nice. That's actually from last year. Is it? Yeah. It's a few years old. Uh, somebody, I think T2T2 has posted it on there. 
Wow. All right. 20 years ago, that skit. And we do have the billboard. Yeah. So let's uh, yeah, let's tear into that, and we'll start the show. Uh, all right. Men on film. And count how many jokes would never be able to make. Oh, just because they're all they're when all Justin's just done. I'll, I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> Seems legit. Seems legit. 